You know what's the saddest part about this movie? The fact that Emma Watson will be known as, for younger kids, as Belle, rather than being Hermione. Um, Emma Watson will always be Hermione, right? She's not Belle. She did a pretty good job, Belle. She pretty much is Belle, but she's Hermione. Look at her. What if she is the one? <gasps> the one who'll break the spell. Hello. You can talk. Well, of course he can talk. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Beauty and the Beast is directed by Bill Condon and it stars Emma Watson as Belle, Dan Stevens as the Beast, Luke Evans, Kevin Kline, Josh Gad, Ewan McGregor, Ian McKellen, and Emma Thompson. So Beauty and the Beast is a remake of the original 1991 Best Picture nominated Beauty and the Beast. And essentially, the, if you haven't heard the plot, because it's a tale as old as time, here's how it goes. There's a girl named Belle, she lives in a small village, and one night her father is kidnapped and like held hostage in this castle, so she goes to the castle to try and free her father, and it turns out that the person holding like her hostage is a beast. Like, an actual beast, not just a metaphorical one. And she ends up taking his place, and... But it turns out that pretty much all the inanimate, almost all of the inanimate objects in the castle are alive to an extent, and they've been cursed on. So, she ends up becoming, like, she ends up deciding to stay with the Beast, and I'll let it go from there. So, starting off with the acting of Beauty and the Beast, Emma Watson as Belle, pretty much everyone saw her on the internet, like, someone photoshopped Emma Watson into a yellow dress, and everyone's like, yeah, that, that, that's Belle. Cast her as Belle in Beauty and the Beast. And they did. And that's probably the perfect casting. Beauty and the Beast is probably one of the most perfectly cast movies of the last few years. I mean, Emma Watson, Dan Stevens as the Beast, he's a great Beast. Beast, yeah, is a great job. He's much better than the X-Men ones. The X-Men should consider getting this guy to be Beast. Except he's playing Legion in the show Legion, so come on, X-Men. Get your crap together. Luke Evans as Gaston, I mean, he really feels like Gaston. I mean, he's he did a great job. He's like arrogant, narcissistic. Yeah, that's Gaston. That is Gaston. No, they, they have a whole song about Gaston. I don't want to recite it. But they have a whole Gaston like song about why he is so great. I mean, everyone in this movie does a really good job with their roles. Kevin Klein's a great job as does a great job as Maurice. Ewan McGregor does a great job as Lumiere. I mean, he's just a CGR candlestick. Can we not give the man praise for doing a good job here, where he's surrounded by CGI objects, opposed to the prequels, where he's surrounded by CGI objects? I mean, he's really come in the last 15 years to acting through CGI objects. Ian McKellen did a great job as Cogsworth, a little bit surprising. I never really thought, hey, he might t Magneto might take on a fairy tale. He did, here he is, he did a great job here. One reason why I kind of think the script for Beauty and the Beast in this version is better than the one in the 91 version is that it really is, it, it takes care of some of the plot holes. One really early established one in the 91 one is how did everyone forget there was like, a, there was a castle and everything? And here they just clean it up with one line. So, plot line, plot holes like that, they're filled relatively easy. The direction of Bill Condon as well, he did a great job with the actors and I really thought it was impressive how he handled the music as well. Because uh, looking at it, how many edits they had in these, mu in like the musical scenes, I can see how it's really tough to edit all those like scenes and make them line up and be cohesive and the music match with what they're singing and stuff and that's really good. And as for the music as well, it's actually really well done. Enjoyed it. I was I was, I was enjoying it. it. It was nice. It was very nice to listen to. I will say that. Also, I'm not entirely of a fan how because in the movie they kind of pull out this same reason that kind of ties it all together and makes it all Deus Ex Machina, you know, that sort of thing where they they kind of have to represent this point, but they don't know how, so they just use it in this other point, which they keep bringing back to, but just feels like some excuse. And several moments in the end felt way too convenient to me, and they kind of warped your whole perception of time. Beauty and the Beast, though, is a really solid musical movie, and I really enjoyed it, and I think it's a worthy adaptation of Beauty and the Beast. So I'll say Beauty and the Beast, I'd buy it on DVD. Have you seen Beauty and the Beast? What did you think of it? What other, like, li Disney live-action movie would you like to see remade? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe and comment on the Platter Pie, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, wow, you made it to the end of the video. Good job. How about you click that subscribe button for more content? Or click one of these two videos. You know, either one's good enough.